Hey folks, it's us, the Raptors. Yep, sorry it's been a while. It's it's just that uh, sir, someone has had a hectic life. But regardless, we're back and we're actually doing a review. Yeah, a review on one most successful dinosaur media yet. Oh yes, sister, I concur. And to help us, we decided to bring in a special guest. And these special guest appearances in these reviews we may do may may might as well serve as character introduction also as uh, ranger hasn't really had the proper ideas or motivation to really think about what to do with character introductions yeah like before it was kind of easy like he did uh the uh, queen i read rex in 89 and then he did uh monsterverse uh godzilla and kong but you know, with so many figures that he has, it's kind of hard to pick down what characters to do and whatnot. Yep, so these reviews will kind of serve as introduction also to get you a little bit of the kind of wacky world we live in. Yep, so for our special guest, here is Parasaurolophus. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you for introducing me to this very special review. Now, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, Parasaurolophus, we're going to be talking about Prehistoric Planet Season 2. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, ladies. I've been wanting to talk a lot about this series as it is definitely quite a banger when it comes to, well, us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep, we can certainly agree. So, basically, uh, Prehistoric Planet. So, the first season we want to consider is probably one of the best uh, dinosaur, like, shows slash documentaries or whatever you want to call it in probably uh, recent years. Yeah, so, it's no surprise that 2022 was kind of interesting when it comes to uh, dino stuff. And, Ranger, what are you doing? I'm positioning the camera. Oh, ow. You got it? Yeah. Great way to break the fourth wall, asshole. <sighs> Whatever. Just go on. Anyways. So, 2022 was interesting when it came to dino stuff. Yeah, when most people think of 2022, they might think of Jurassic World Dominion, but... Uh, well... Oh, don't worry, ladies. I can sign up. <clears throat> Jurassic World Dominion is a big pile piece of shit. Well, we all think it's entirely bad, but to say that it was underwhelming would be an understatement. We don't add, honestly don't want to talk too much because the movie are, already got in a lot of hate and we just feel that it's not worth... Um, <clears throat> Beating it over again. Yeah. Uh, but but Prehistoric Planet came out. And that one is, without doubt, <coughs> got many people excited. Because this was probably one of the very first uh, dinosaur documentaries. To actually add in a bit of effort when it comes to storytelling. And, but at the same time, uh, depict uh, us dinos in a more realistic light. And when we say realistic, we know that some of you may be uh, not uh, particularly a fan of, you know, more realistic dinosaurs like us having feathers or not exactly roaring or stuff like that. We could kind of get it, but we actually don't mind our more recent uh, depictions. Oh, no, certainly not. So... So we quite enjoy Prehistoric Planet Season 1, you know. We thought it was a great narrative, and it and at first we kind of thought that it would kind of have a similar structure to, like, Walking with Dinosaurs, as it, it was also sort of a miniseries. But it turned out that it kind of have a different formatting when it comes to a storytelling. Like, it has different segments in each episode, and each is dedicated to a specific uh, uh, habitat. Yeah. So, so then uh, season two was announced and everyone got excited again. And more interestingly, there's no real competition when it came to dinosaur media right now. But, well, hold on, ladies. What about that 65 mil? Shut up. Shut up. Uh, we honestly don't want to waste our time with that one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. 
Maybe we'll, maybe if we have the chance to watch it, maybe, but we're honestly not that interested. Oh, okay. Yeah, so season two, when that was announced, you know, everyone is getting excited once again. And when it came out, it pretty much received the exact same response as season one, you know, a great recreation of a prehistoric planet, so to speak. So, with that being said, so what are some of the things that are practically the same, but basically uh, different in the season? Well, I think I can start here, ladies. Thank you very much. So, it does have a similar format, you know, different episodes having short segments of us doing uh, whatever we do, you know, whether, whether it be uh, hunting for food, uh, eating, um, and, and making some bangers, <laughs> if you g girls know what I mean. Please don't do not make a joke like that again, I swear. Oh, uh, okay. But you get what, what I mean. But, you know, thank, but thanks to the great uh, CGI scene in this series, um, it definitely has, you know, a sense of realism that we're definitely looking into what we used to be like. That is correct, Parasaurolophus. The CG is definitely a really, really realistic, so to speak, and in a good way. Like, like you can see, like, uh, tiny uh, feather details or scale details on a lot of the dinosaurs and other creatures. Yeah, and speaking of creatures, what we especially like is the variety that this sh Season 2 gave us. Um, we want to say that Season 1 did have a good variety of creatures. Although we do kind of agree that they kind of gone a little heavy-handed when it came to pterosaurs. Yeah, like, how many pterosaurs were there last time? I don't know. I don't freaking know. That's why we kind of turned down on Tyranodon appearing here because we don't need more pterosaur love. I'm sure he's doing fine, right? Oh yeah, sure. I've stopped counting how many days I've been in this, this stinky-ass bag. Why do humans have so many stinky-ass socks these days? Yeah, so there's a plentiful of creature variety here, aside from us dinos. Like, we got a bit of love for mosasaurs, uh, plenty of uh, avian uh, birds, because yes, there were two distinct uh, groups of dinosaurs, uh, regular dinosaurs, you could say, and birdies. Bird births, you could say. Yeah, and believe it or not, we have a mammal. Yeah, one of our favorite snacks. Oh yes, I could say. Hey, do you think we could order some Chinese food? Oh yeah, I heard they have a great selection of girls. Um, thank you for for letting me speak, but I don't think it's appropriate to make that joke. It, it's not. No, unless we want to get uh, you know, copyright strike. No. Okay. But anyway, so yeah, we got a pretty cool mammal. Um, how do we pronounce it? Uh, hold on. Uh, Ranger, you want to help us out? Yeah, I'm actually scanning through my notes. Okay, well, hurry up. Okay, and uh, basically, it's called a ladder to theorem, you guys. Oh, okay, a ladder to theorem. Yep. Or however we want to pronounce it. We're not exactly the most uh, smartest when it comes to every single dinosaur name, honestly. Yeah, so how do you expect us to pronounce all mammal names? But yeah, so that mammal was pretty cool. <clears throat> we see, you know, her, you know, trying to protect her, you know, little uh, mammal hatchlings from the evils of, you know, uh, prehistoric Madagascar and, 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 by the way, her appearance was in the Islands episode, and we should talk a little bit about how the episodes are formatted. So, the first four episodes, we want to say, are kind of in the realm of the uh, previous season, where they explore different habitats. Like, episode one is Islands, um, episode two, Badlands, episode three, um, wait, do we got that right? Hold on. Yeah, and episode uh, three is swamps. Oh, right, right, right. Episode four is oceans. And the last one, believe it or not, North America. Yeah, so we're not sure about that slight change. Uh, hopefully that means that if there's the potential for season three, 
I could give us a different uh, structure in episodes. I mean, the last episode, regardless, uh, has a similar structure anyways, but, you know, a bit more variety uh, is definitely a sign for what could be for season three. Indeed, ladies. Indeed. So, so yeah, so, so I guess this should lead us to, you know, that uh, episodes are formatted into segments again, but there is a twist. The segments themselves are a little bit shorter. Yes, absolutely. So, so basically, towards the end of each episode, if you guys remember back in season one, there was these uh, little like shorter uh, videos dedicated to some of the research done. Like, you know, did T-Rex actually swim? Did we velociraptors had feathers? And don't try to uh, binge, don't try to do the hate comments, you scaleless uh, fan boys. <clears throat> anyways, anyways, so, but instead, uh, they decided to, uh, put these, uh, short clips, or as they called Prehistoric Planet Uncovered, into the actual episodes. We honestly don't mind this change. Yeah, we know that some people are kind of bothered by this, as they say that they ruined the segment's narratives. <coughs> I mean, I mean, we can kind of get that... The segments do feel a little bit shorter in certain uh, episodes, but we don't mind them in a the sense that they actually are pretty informative on some of the research. One of our uh, favorite examples is, you know, discussing the Pachycephalosaur uh, head buddy fingering, which is, you know, a debate that's been long uh, talked about for years, you know. Panachons is not, oh, they had better. Then they say, oh no, their skulls were too fragile. They couldn't. And then they say, wait, there's evidence of head legions. So they must have head butted. So, oh. So, yeah, we actually don't think that the uh, segments are entirely unnecessary to say the least. Yeah, and even then, each segment in this series is pretty well engaging in their own ways. Thank you very much. Uh, one of my, uh, Favorites, and this might sound a little morbid, is the one that takes place in the Hell Creek Formation, and we see my cousin and Montasaurus unfortunately get brutally killed by two T-Rexes. Oh yeah, that segment was fucking badass. Oh yeah. Yeah, the fact that the T-Rexes had to wait till nighttime to strike their attack, I mean, that is well choreographed, honestly. And it honestly has a good buildup because, you know, the T-Rex has had to work for the specific time and to attack the Amonosaur since, since David Attenborough, that's the narrator, by the way, and we'll talk a little bit about his narration later. Um, he mentions how the Amonosaurs were actually a bit bigger than T-Rexes, so they had to wait for a specific opportunity to launch at them. And this is honestly we really like because while it is kind of cool to see, you know, T-Rex uh, mindlessly... Uh, Rampaging through, you know, devouring people or other animals and, you know, in your average to mill, uh, let's say Jurassic World, uh, sequel or whatever. <clears throat> it's a little nice to see, uh, you know, some uh, thought uh, being put into how T-Rexes may have hunt. Considering that, you know, it was the big bad uh, predator in its environment that, yep. And, you know, I think the way they did it was pretty awesome. And T-Rex got a little bit of love this season, if we were to be honest. Yes, absolutely. So about Attenborough's uh, narration, uh, I think David Attenborough is a really good narrator. I already loved his uh, narration in season one. He has sort of a mellow uh, voice, but for some reason, it honestly works for this kind of se series. Like... Considering that a lot of the action is sort of in between, uh, whenever other, uh, hap whenever other uh, uh, animal interactions happen, yeah, uh, even when that action happens, his narration is pretty minimal to say the least. Uh, uh, one of our uh, favorite examples is again with T Rexes. You know, the in the North America episode where a T-Rex is, you know, defending his Al Alamosaurus carcass and, you know, the Akatsukualis appear and then two another one appears and Espero says, 
two beaks are better than one. Like, and then it softly transitions into, you know, the Quetzalcoatlus is uh, trying to uh, shoo away the T-Rex. And, and that's an example of good narration. You don't need to be, you know, over the top or, you know, hyper to convince, you know, a thought-provoking uh, narration to tell you what is happening on screen. You just need to be, you know, a little bit calm and mellow. And whenever something uh, dramatic happens, let that dramatic scene happen. Yeah, and we think Antiborough did a really fantastic job. Like, he definitely s suits the theme of this series quite well. And back onto, you know, the creatures feature. Of course, we mentioned that one mammal and, of course, T-Rex. Uh, other creatures that we really enjoy seeing were the Isisaur, um, was, uh, Rajasaurus. Uh, we already mentioned Quetzalcoatlus. What's another? Oh, one of my favorites is the Triceratops because we actually see the big horns on that one. Oh yeah, so for anyone that don't know, that particular Triceratops is actually based on our actual specimen. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Yoshi Trike, girls. Yoshi Trike. Yoshi Trike? You sure they're not going to get sued by Nintendo? <laughs> Did you just say that just because it, the Super Mario Bros. was just released? No. No. No, I did not. Mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah, that Triceratops design is pretty unique as, you know, it's definitely a bit out of the box when most people see Triceratops, but it works. And that segment itself in the series is pretty uh, well uh, written as, you know, they show a younger individual uh, trying to display for females but, you know, he doesn't have any scars, which does show perfect health, but that doesn't mean he's strong. Yep, until a big bully, uh, older trike appears and beats the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Anyway, so, all right, folks, so, what's in other creatures? Uh, oh, how do you girls feel about your cousins, the Oshiraptors? Oh, we absolutely love them. Yeah, like... While it is good to see, you know, us velociraptors, and yes, we're calling ourselves velociraptors, uh, even though we're clearly Deinonychus. <laughs> oh, man, paleontology is such a fun debate. Um, <clears throat> um, it is nice to see a nice variety of raptors here, uh, one of which is the Oshiraptor, which we feel is probably the most unique of uh, the raptors in this series thus far. Yeah, because... They have a really unique uh, build to them with a more longer snout. And we see that they're actually more of a fishing raptor. Sort of like uh, how Spinosaurus is more of a fishing dinosaur. And we have heard some people say that their design is a little goofy. And while they're not entirely wrong, we honestly think that the creative team did the best designing them. Because when you look at the actual skeleton of the raptor... It is, uh, admittedly, a strangely proportioned animal to begin with. Absolutely, girls. Like, you know, not everything needs to be pitch perfect in designing each animal. You just need to give it the right characters and what they're like. And with the Oshiraptors, they did just that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, so they absolutely nailed it with, you know, how they hunt um, the fishes and how the younger male had to sneakily avoid the bigger ones, bigger guys, in order to, to steal one of the fishes. First try did not go well as he got pecked on, but he waited for the opportunity when two, two others were picking on each other, and that's when he grabbed his meal. Yeah, so, yeah. And another raptor that we enjoy seeing is, um, Ranger, can you help us out again? <sighs> You guys complain about me breaking the fourth wall. Shut up. Uh, all right, I got it. It's called the Kuru. Um, Atabro did state the last, the scientific, uh, full scientific name, but uh, the notes I got here, it says Kuru. Okay, well, the Kuru. So basically that raptor was hunting the Corytha raptor eggs, and it's really 
And this is another thing we like about season two is that there are moments where it shows the predators uh, hunting, you know, the prey items, and you feel really bad about the prey. Like, oh no, the Carithoraptor males, they take so damn long to to wait for their precious babies to hatch. But you have to remember, it's the circle of life. The Kiru had to hunt for eggs because she's a fucking single mom, okay? Single moms need a fucking break. They need to eat to, in order to feed their kin. Why don't you people get the... <clears throat> Uh, do you took your medicine, ma'am? Thank you very much. Yeah, my sister, she's been... <laughs> Just sit down. Mm. Uh, don't worry, folks. She's uh, completely harmless. Shut up. Okay, so... So... Yeah, so the... So what my sister was trying to say is there are several scenes in the show that show, you know, how, you know, different animals do have to uh, battle the weaklings, but it it's for their own survival. Like, the predators throughout this series, even back in season one, are shown to be not monsters, but just living beings that need to hunt in order to survive. And, and even then, you know, there are definitely a lot of scenes in this series that shows... You know, survive out the fittest. You know, we even see herbivores acting like jerks towards each other. Not just with the Triceratops we mentioned, but we see the, uh, the Trachinia. Tr Trachinia. Am I saying that right, Ranger? Um, uh, you're close enough. All right, well, that and Kylosaur. Uh, we see a pair of them uh, trying to uh, eat on one bush, but then one says, nope, screw you, find another one. And luckily, uh, that one did manage to find a watering hole, but then he is confronted by a bigger, much older ankylosaur that stand no chance. But thankfully, his sibling came to the rescue and the both then square off against the older male. And another example of that, folks, is in the Swamps episode where the Pachy where a younger Pachycephalosaur tries to defeat the alpha male of the group. But unfortunately, that shows to be pretty uh, flat, to say the least, for that one. And he's basically exiled. Yeah, yeah. Getting rejected is the worst feeling of all time. So, so yeah. And so, this, those are just, you know, our examples of why, you know, we really enjoyed this series for its more uh, realistic approach on how the dinosaurs would have interacted with themselves and other creatures. And, you know, like we said, the CGI is so good. Uh, we will admit that there are some shots that could have been a bit cleaner, especially with the under t underwater uh, scenes. I mean, that's kind of understandable as mixing water, real water with CG elements would be a bit difficult, uh, even on a bit, bit of a smaller budget. Indeed, girls, uh, we will admit that that itself that some of the underwater uh, shots Maybe a little uh, blurry sometimes, but, you know, like we said, the creators of the show did their very best. Thank you very much. Right. Are you calm down, sister? I guess. You want to talk about the music? Oh, yeah, the music. Yeah, the music itself is pretty good. Um, I'll admit, the music may not be as memorable as maybe the Jurassic uh, Park soundtracks, but, you know, it is memorable enough, aside from the main theme, like, uh, there are some pretty uh, nice uh, whimsical uh, music to go along with some of the, you know, happier moments in this series. Uh, I think one of the examples is, is seeing, you know, the colony of Ammonites, and we got this nice, sweet uh, music playing over them. Kind of fits those Ammonites uh, personas and their weird-ass designs. Yeah, so... So yeah, music is definitely really well. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Hans Zimmer's is a freaking god in the music industry. Indeed, girls, thank you very much. So, do we need anything else to say? Yeah, um, and like we said, we really do appreciate some of the more uh, speculative um, uh, behaviors that the dinosaurs are in. Like, 
like, you have to admit, guys, that, you know, we won't entirely know what we're actually like behavior-wise. But the important thing is that this show does try to have, you know, explanation on how we act certain things. Uh, one of my favorite examples is how a volcanic wasteland is actually beneficial to nesting grounds of bigger dinosaurs, particularly the isosaurs. Yeah, and we even learned about a, a totally new formation that was that's from India that used to be part of freaking volcanic wasteland. And freaking dinosaur eggs were found there. How cool is that? Yeah, sorry about role reversal of what we saw in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, unfortunately, my um, my sister, uh, he, she, she didn't make it through. Oh no, she didn't make it through the eruption of Mount Siaibo. No, she didn't make it through the filming of the movie. She unfortunately died from actual lava. Ow. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think we kind of discussed um, some of our favorite scenes and what we enjoy and what we uh, really like about this series. So yeah. So overall, Prehistoric Plan Season 2 is a really fun uh, uh, documentary series. Definitely one of the best uh Dinosaur documentaries to date. Um, one of the best uh, dinosaur series, uh, period. Um, it has, you know, great uh, CGI, uh, fantastic, a fantastic score, and, you know, some of the, some of the coolest uh, creature interactions you can see in documentaries like these. Absolutely. And to the creators who may be watching this somewhat a poor quality review, hey, well, you gotta admit, Ranger, these uh, reviews aren't exactly the great. Please, can you just, guys just wrap it up? Okay. Anyway, so so to the creators who may be watching this, um, we really appreciate this series. It's really well uh, put together. We really appreciate some of the minor changes you did here and there. We also kept some of the, the older elements that made season one such a great series in the first place. And we really enjoy season two. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I think that's a good time for us to wrap up. So thank you guys for, so much for watching us, if you kind of bear this video. Yeah, and if you guys would like, uh, hit the subscribe button and we'll have you uh, like this video. And we'll make sure to uh, do a little bit more reviews. Um, we're not sure how many, uh, considering uh, our busy time schedule, well, someone else's, but... You know, regardless, we really appreciate you guys watching these uh, videos and, you know, we'll definitely uh, uh, do as much content. Well, Ranger will do as much content as he can. So, anyways, that's all we have to say about Prehistoric Season, Prehistoric Planet Season 2. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and, yep, so bye! I just watched Owl House, okay? <sighs> All right, that's a wrap, folks. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching.